policy, Tim and Vera, is a little bit confusing sometimes. I'll try and make it easy for you. Stick around and see. We're going to use enclave review concept in a form of question form uh, in a case study analysis. If you see it in your exams, this is the way they will present it. You would like to watch this video. Stick around and see what I have for you. First case, a 45-year-old male presents with what? Headache, dizziness, shortness of breath, vertigo, paralysis, claudication, flawed skin, gum bleed for three months. Blood pressure, 150 over 70, and large spleen in the liver. He might have quit 55%. I already given you the diagnosis on the topic, but this is the way they were presented to you. Very confusing. It crosses multiple uh, diagnoses. You can see so many things there. And I ask you to underline the passwords, but you can see pruritus. Is this a liver problem because the liver is enlarged? He has claudication. Is he peripheral vascular disease? And he has hypertension, but his skin is flushed. He cannot be like that. He's dizzy, is he getting stroke? He has shortness of breath. I mean, is he having PE, get a DVT? Then he's bleeding. How does this happen? Gun bleed easily for three months. He has vertigo. And the most of all, he has headache. But the most important, yeah, he marked to create is about 50%. And then the spleen is enlarged. Why would the spleen be enlarged? This is how this condition is very confusing. So what are your buzzwords? It's those I've underlined. You will not see them like that, but because I want to teach you, I put them all together. And when you're reading the question, the first two lines, you should get a bunch of this there. And as you go, you pick up the rest from the case with your highest laser focus on those buzzwords. But you can see this disease crosses multiple. I have headache, but then I have dizziness and shortness of breath, vertigo, pruritus. Why am I itchy? Claudication, flawed skin, gum. This is what we call polycentemia vera. And those are your buzzwords that you got to pay attention to. Those are your buzzwords. Why do they have all these things? This is a form of cancer, okay? It's a cancer where the bone marrow, if this is the bone marrow, is being stimulated to make red blood cell mostly. So red blood cell is mostly increased. But guess what? If the bone marrow gets stimulated, your what? The VBC goes up and your platelet also goes up. Unfortunately, this are not good. They are all immatured immature, especially the platelets. They are immature platelets. And so they don't do what they're supposed to do. That's why they have gum bleed. But that's not the major problem. The major problem is this. You have more red blood cell, you hematocrate. The diagnosis is to have a hematocrate, okay, greater than at least 45%. And this is 55 Okay, and all the blood basically gets to your lung and what? You have shortness of breath. What happened? Why did they get claudication? But because the blood is so thick, it's so viscous. You see, this is the blood. You have large blood volume, but it's very viscous. So it does not flow easily. It's slow flow and it forms clots. It forms clots, mostly clots. Even though it has increased, you form clot. And so blood does not go to your leg. So your leg, you get claudication. The blood that go to the skin, make your skin flushed. The blood that go to your head, it stay there forever because it's thick. It doesn't flow the way it's supposed to. You get headache, right? Why do they each provide this? This blood breaks down. They breaks down easily. And they release their hemoglobin which has what? Bilirubin in it. And this this bilirubin that give them the priorities. This is all very important. The blood volume increase and the hypertension 
their reputation basically. So I'm trying to explain this is the symptoms. This is the way you think about it. So you can be able to list all the signs and symptoms of these patients. Um, they, they, they will have headache, dizziness, shortness of breath, pruritus, claudication, flosking. There's a bunch of them, but it's related to what? Blood volume, blood volume, blood volume. And this is why these people have this problem. A lot of problems because of high level I mean, the blood is too viscous. It does not flow. Why is the spleen enlarged? Because that's where most of the blood goes in order to break all the dead cells and de dead tissue, all the red cells that is broken down. It make the spleen enlarged and the liver to get overwhelmed. And so they have enlarged and liver sp and spleen. That tells me it's a severe disease when you start seeing this. Once again, this is polycythemia mevera, a really bad disease but it's treatable, right? He has a lot of complications. So what are your buzzwords? Is those of an underlying. What are your priority findings? If you said follow up on that, not all of them. Okay, so polycythema vera, I expect this. So it's not a priority find. It's this, enlarged spleen. Your spleen is enlarged, I'm worried. And your liver is enlarged. And hypertension, yes. When you start seeing hypertension, you should be worried that now the disease has gone through a problem. So this is not that bad, okay? And then the headache, these two. So that one, hypertension, enlarged pain, and liver, those are my priority findings. They will confuse you with this. Essentia, thrombo, Cytemia, basically. It look like that. Essential thrombocytemia is not polycythemia vera. It's not polycythemia. This is also a bone marrow disease problem where bone marrow gets stimulated by you making more platelets. Your platelet goes up and it look like that, but it's not the same. Essential thrombocytemia is mostly increasing platelet where poly Centemia vera is due to what? Increase mostly on red blood cell. Don't get the two confused. So this is the first thing I want you to pay attention to. And you can figure out all the signs and symptoms. I'll give you most of them here. So let's get to the rest of the case. Now that we've made the priority finding, we've, uh, we know which one we have to follow up on on. Which of the following teaching, what would you manage the patient? Somebody in metacrate of 55%, his spleen is enlarged, he has gum bleeding, he has dizziness, headache, hypertension. What do you want to do? We want to make the blood less uh, and viscous. So this is the blood. It's so thick. Okay. So if I can make it less viscous, that's fine. So I tell you to drink two to three liters of water a day. Hydrate yourself as much as possible. Those are the teaching. We got to vampire you. That means we got to take your blood away. So for a week, we can do it two to five times a week. So two to five times, we have to take your blood in order to, otherwise your blood level will go up and get thick and it become like concrete and you die from it. So we going. We have to vampire you. I call it vampire, okay? It's a form of vampiring. Basically, you go to the lab, and we draw about 250 to 500 ml every day. Some people go three times a week. That's why I say two to five. Some people go twice a week. Some people, depending on their blood level, everybody is different. Some people go have to go every day. So five times a week, not the seven days. And so this is what we do. The goal of phlebectomy is not to make, make you metacrate like 36, like normal people. No way. There's no way. It will kill you. That's not where you live. You live in 55 and 60. We can drop it a little bit to 45. So that's the goal. The goal is between 40 to 45. Is the hematocrate, basically. So that's where we want to get it to. Think about it. Number four. Ion is needed for your red cells to make hemoglobin and then do their thing, right? If you take iron, we make more red blood cells. I don't want you to take iron. 
So it's a contraindication. So one of the biggest teaching for people who are policy team at Vera is to teach them to avoid iron rich diet, avoid it as much as possible. I know we all want to eat iron so that we can increase, increase our hemoglobin hematocrit. These people have too much of it. They don't need it anymore. So avoid that. I already talked about it. Remove 250 to 500 each for probably determined time. And then the treatment you teach them is like peripheral venous disease. I see the same thing. This is the same thing, peripheral venous disease. You want to teach them the same teaching. You want to help them move the blood to the heart. So they should not be in a what? Um, dependent position all the time. They have to elevate their leg. Elevate your leg so that the blood can go back to your heart. So prolonged uh, seating is bad. So avoid prolonged seating is good so that your blood can go up. Like you tell uh, peripheral venous disease patient who have a venous disease to move the blood back to the heart. So don't stand for a long time. Don't sit in the play for a long time. Just elevate your leg, move your calf so that blood can move. Elevate the leg and use support holes, yeah, to push the blood back. The blood is so sluggish, it cannot go. So all this teaching is expected. And expect them to ask you this. If they give you a case like that, they have to give you this teaching. Okay, you have to teach this patient. You have to know what to do with them and how you teach them about the whole procedure. Okay. Um, then... I said, okay, let's discuss medical management because they will take you there. After you do provide teaching, the doctor has to be involved. So we have to do medical management. Medical management is all pathophysiology. That's why I tell people, don't memorize. If you understand the disease process, then the rest is easy. I told you why they're bleeding, right? They, they have abnormal platelets and the blood is cramping together and it consuming the platelet. So, um, and then the major problem for these people is what? I told you clot. If you have clot, what will happen? You get a stroke, you get a DVT, you get a PE. So I'm going to give you aspirin, okay? And this aspirin, it's not a full dose aspirin, right? It's a low dose, so if aspirin, so low dose aspirin, that's what you tell the patient to take. And this will prevent the clot formation and that will help them so that they don't have develop clot. So aspirin is indicated for uh, polycythemia vera. Then the next one, I told you the very, the very, the, the itchy, right, parietes. Right, it's because of the bilirubin that is being breaking down. So we give them some Benadryl, right? That will help with that, right? Then one thing I want you to know, because the spleen when it's enlarged is destroying all the dead tissue, all the dead red blood cell, and these red cells that is making so fast, some of them will also die. So when they die, the DNA breaks down. And then they release uric acid. So these people have high level of uric acid and they can get gout. And therefore, what do you think? What medication will you give them? You've seen this before. I look very you know. This is to destroy all the uric acid uh, so that they don't develop gout and affect their kidney. And so this is another medication you should know that they do, you can use it for it. Okay. Then they have claudication, okay? They have claudication. So what medication we usually use to prevent claudication, to help with the pain with the claudication? Yeah, pentocephalin. Or you can use pesantin. It's the same thing. Or pentocephalin. These two can be used for claudication because of that it improved with the ischemia of the leg and it helped with that these are the minor minor medications that you can use the best one we have but what you see all of this is not treating the problem we have to treat the problem what is the problem the bone marrow bone marrow 
is being stimulated and making blood cell, it's making some platelet that is abnormal, it's making the VVC. So we need to stop the bone marrow. The way to stop bone marrow is to use chemotherapy. So these people need some special chemotherapy. And this is the common, the best medication, hydroxyurea, okay? And you've seen this before. This is the medication used for sickle cell. We want to um, prevent the, the bone marrow from making a circular cell. So we give them hydroxyurea to help with that. The same thing, people with polycythemia vera, hydroxyurea is a chemo agent and that will help with decreasing bone marrow. It will suppress the bone marrow basically. So this is a chemo agent, basically a chemo agent. Another medication, I'm going to give it to you so that when you see it, don't, you don't freak out. If they don't give you hydroxy uh, urea, it's bosophan, okay? Okay, bosophan is a form of a chemo agent. It's doing the same thing as hydroxy urea and the other one is meriran. These are the chemo agents that we have for polycythemia vera. This is the best one. But this is also do the same thing. So if you see this in the uh, selected apply, you got to pick all of them. They are all treatment chemo agent for the treatment of polycythemia vera. And these are the medications that we have that is available. This is the medical management. All of them make sense while we're using it. Okay. And then... I did not stop. I'm trying to dig. I'm trying to, I try to like give you guys things that is more expensive. Like um, I, most of the stuff that you need so that in case they take you anywhere, you know, which of the following uh, complication of polycythemia vera, I expect them to ask you, what should you watch for? I told you the main problem is a little bit confusing again. Too much blood. I like drawing this. Too much blood, that is slow. It's like a tortoise, slow moving blood. It was going to clot. If it clot, the major problem is DVT, right? You're going to have a heart attack. They're not going to bleed. GI bleed is a wrong answer. They will get a stroke and they get a PE. It's all uh, thrombosis. So we got to prevent that. And that is all our teaching. So DVT, MI, stroke, and pulmonary embolism. They're not going to have GI bleed. I told you about a gum, but that is not the major complication, okay? It's all due to the platelet effect, and that's why they're bleeding. But most of the time, is 99.9%. .9 it's a thrombosis issue. Now, you expect this to be asked if they, they're going to give you a case on policy team ever. You got to tell the patient what food to eat or not. Which of the following diet clients should avoid? Which one should they avoid? We already talked about the pathophysiology. What diet should they avoid? Iron. Iron rich diet. And if you look at all this, these are all iron rich diet. I try not to like confuse you too much. I've tried to find the best iron rich diet. I think they may put it in you. If they give you, they will put it there. Green leafy vegetables, everybody knows about it. Dry fruit, egg, these are common that you should know. So I, I put it there. If you know more, yeah, just add it to your, 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 your back of your mind that these are all iron rich diet. And so all this, they should avoid, they should avoid. They should avoid, they should avoid, they should avoid. And this is like select or apply. Okay. And so this is um things they, they should avoid. I think this is the end of the road. Okay. So this is the case, polycythemia vera, very simple case, but complicated. Things they can ask you, you have to know the pathophysiology. If you know the pathophysiology of the problem, it does not matter what kind of case they give you. So try, my advice to you, when you're preparing every disease process, know the pathophysiology, and then you can sit down and say, oh, this, that, I can teach them to do this. It's the, if I know this is the problem, I will teach you to do this, so that you don't do that. It's like a selected apply, teaching, education, right? That's all. And risk factors, you're just doing the same thing with the case study. That's what they're doing. Take care of yourself. Subscribe is down. Click it so that you can get more content like that.
enjoy that dark and place at your leisure. All the best of luck. Be good. And keep charging as always. Thanks for watching.